Just steer the rack out. Yeah. Just turn it so it steers out. I mean, so you've got more along mm -hmm. at that point over, right? Yeah. About an inch. Or yeah. And let's just see if that thing wants to be shorter or longer. These men are searching. A search most of us make every day. Only here, the ingredients of man, machine, and time must be in perfect balance. A professional auto racing team. Driver, Mark Donahue. Engineers, mechanics. The Penske racing team. One professional team out of hundreds, but only one level of this kind of search. There is another level of the search. John Farbman, amateur race driver, and his team. One team out of thousands. Doesn't seem to work right. Yeah. Hit it. Hit it. Come on in. You think that'll do it? Yeah. Okay. Amateur and professional. A counterpoint of search. drivers, teams of watchers who come week after week to make their own kinds of search. Separate people pulled together out of separate worlds in a mystique of car, track, driver, and crowd. A mystery almost 80 years old. When man found new freedom in machine-powered wheels, the tempo of the search changed to match the rhythm of the new technological age. What began as competition between car and dusty roads soon became something else. In 1911 at Indianapolis, competition and technology found a different pattern for the chase. It began going round and round a paved four-cornered oval. At Daytona and other courses all over the country, men and car raced together toward their own sense of history. It was the only way, they said, for man to search for the spirit of man in a fast-changing technological world. An automobile began to reflect the time in which it was designed and built, to reflect all the scattered differences between certain people who were making this special kind of search. Amateur became professional, began to organize and formalize the means and methods, set up safety standards, turned a pastime into a sport in which the purse for single races climbed to over a million dollars. Some of the races flew down straight tracks. They called it drag racing, a 440-yard test of heart and muscle. People with wheels, and they went round and round various sized tracks like Indy and super speedways. on smaller weekend dirt tracks or road courses, going for two hours or 24 hours. So each year, thousands of different human beings go on thousands of different searches in front of millions of watchers at two different levels, for money or for love, and most often for both. Has back pain got you bent over? Do painful headaches drive you crazy? Does traveling have you twisted in knots? Then you need Fuzuoku 9000, the pocket-sized personal massager. Look, with just a touch, you can see thousands of pulsating waves. It's 
Sometimes it takes one good lap to make it worth it for that week. You win a race and you're hooked for at least a year. This is what I've wanted to do all my life. This is what I want to do now. I get cut, I get burned, I'll come out of the car and I don't even realize it because I have ceased to exist. I'm concentrating so totally that I'm not there. Uh, it was a hobby and all my friends were racing and I'd be helping them out and then uh, eventually the sport grew and we all grew with it, which included Mark and Peter Epson and a lot of the people who were racing on an amateur level and we kind of grew with the sport and next thing you know we were being paid for what we were doing for fun. Well, I, I, of course, raced myself. Uh, back Everybody back begins back as an amateur, even Roger Penske. I was able to, old enough to have a driver's license and was involved in some drag racing and then uh, involved in some hill climbs. Then we had a left turn club in Ohio where we'd run on the dirt tracks with MGs and Jaguars and Austin Healy's in between the stock car events. That really was my start and then went on to driver school and drove through the SCCA. But when an ex-amateur like Roger Penske turns professional, his special kind of dedication pulls together some of the finest drivers and technicians in the sport. The Penske team is like an engine. Everything meshes together perfectly. And then when people wonder why they're winning, it's simply because they don't know just how beautiful a thing it is to watch the Penske crew in action. Around the clock, this man never, ever slacks off to 99%. Roger feels that he wants to be involved in many different kinds of racing for a couple of reasons. One, he feels that involvement in one kind of racing, if you learn anything there, it's also applicable to other kinds of racing. People have asked this, you know, what my impression was of Indianapolis. It was it's probably the toughest type of racing that you're involved in because you have a track with four corners on it and you're looking for tenths of a second in order to get the maximum speed. This year's Indy was a, a disappointment to us. I felt that it was like a 100-yard dash. You get, you know, runners take your marks, get set, and then they should stop. They did it three times to us. And we got caught with Bobby Allison's car with it not starting, and then we washed a cylinder down, and he never got it warmed up. And we made a number of mistakes, which uh, were, were, you know, it really hurt us. Today's top professional teams are a combination of organizational specialists, and the search is implemented with computer programs. We have about 15 people at the shop, and our capability lies in doing a superior job of development on the cars, and then doing a superior job of preparation for the race itself. It's a total involvement. You're continuously thinking about it, working upon it in your mind, if not in the shop. In amateur racing, the search isn't as programmed because the resources to be found are mostly inside oneself. If I were to, to, to spend the money, if I were to have a program, okay, yeah. that I would want, I couldn't make that amount of money to do it. Right, but you can't always get what you want. You get, you settle for what you... Yeah, well, I've been settling for, for seven years. You're just a kid. You have plenty of time. You can spend all your money and play and race and have a good time. I am not a kid. I'm a 30-year-old graduate of uh, Cornell University with a degree in astrophysics. I'm a stockbroker. I'm a commodity trader. You're wonderful. Uh, yeah, well, that, <laughs> we have to find somebody who has money who realizes that. If I found an old man, John... But we still don't have enough lead time for next year. Lead time. <laughs> In the anatomy of auto racing, there is always the need for enough time to find the right combination of man and machine. The racing is something worth doing perfectly. It's unique. Every extra increment of effort is another tenth of a second a lap. It's the search for perfection. Abigail, would you like more cream? I think all the guys that work here and people involved in racing are more or less artists in their own different kind of way. They all strive for their own different kind of perfection. What does this, the upper camber point, do with a 30% setup? I want to drop the caster link down again. I don't know what that would do to the steer. I don't see how such a small thing can mess us up so bad. Mm -hmm. How's it going? I still haven't, I've just about got the brakes the way I want them. 
that's what's been, been causing the problem. There always comes that moment when all the looking, the building, the quiet searching are over. When it's time to move toward that moment of truth, toward the pressure and suspense of what's waiting when car and driver finally meet track and competition. This great big truck here, there's, there's two $100,000 cars. And imagine the pressure that is on all of us, myself and the crew, to do well with this, with this tremendous force. It's like trying to, you know, attack Morocco with the United States Army. On an amateur level, you always seem to be attacking the United States with a Moroccan army. This car might be worth $4,000, and, and uh, in order to be professional, you need a car that may be worth fifteen to twenty or thirty or $150,000. And I don't have that kind of dough. If he wanted to climb a mountain, you know, if he really wanted to climb a mountain as bad as he wants to race, yeah. then I would say, you know, spend your last dime on all the equipment you need, and then if you don't have enough money, you know, work two jobs until you get it. The history of this car is that we've shown that the car is quicker, at least our combination of car, engine, and team is quicker, but we have failed to win a race yet, and really, that's what we're here for, is to win races. That's the only measure of success, so you can't say the car is successful yet. And so the executives uh, at Penske Racing and the executives at Porsche are asking why, with all this money and all this time and effort that's gone into this car, are we not winning? The machine. Unlike any other sport, the tool also operates at two different levels. High cost for professionals, low cost for amateurs. But at both levels, there never seems to be enough money. So all problems really become the same problem. Once car and driver combine to meet the track, they become the ultimate extension of their crew. Woody, John Woodard, chief mechanic, uh, the hardest working, very intense guy, uh, very uncompromising in his ways, has, has really tried hard now to, to build not only this car, but an identical spare car, which is something we've very rarely been able to do. In the history of our racing. It's approximately a thousand horsepower and it uh, will do over 220 miles an hour on the straightaway. Between all this chassis and the suspension, everything is made of either aluminum, magnesium, or titanium. A perfect example is the, the wheel. You can see is very light, complete with tire. A front suspension, there's hardly anything to it. This is the oil pressure gauge here, the gear shift lever, and also has a quick disconnect steering wheel. These are uh, brake fluid uh, reservoir tanks, uh, the brake gas and uh, clutch pedals. Has a Sears diehard battery. And all the engine cooling is done by this fan, which uh, sucks air in, in from the uh, top and forces it out through the bottom. So what turbocharging is, the uh, exhaust from the motor comes out the bottom of the motor and comes into this half of the turbocharger and that turns a turbine which in turn turns this turbine and this turbine draws air from the outside in this duct and forces it under pressure into the engine we get the cars complete from porsche but we completely uh go through the cars uh before it gets to the first race we have at least 1600 man hours Originally a 1959 bug-eyed Sprite, Austin Healey Sprite. What did it cost? Originally, I think, with all the options on it, which weren't many, I think $1,900. Original cost, new. Drive it out of your local BMC dealer. What do you have in it now? Over the four or five years, or actually six years, it's been raced by two owners, I would imagine $10,000. Counterpoint. Amateur. Professional. Always the same tension of things may be left undone. The minutes of practice before a race are a time of mystery. Questions. What could go wrong? Should I give up with this car? Should I go on with the car I have? All the hopes and fears are organized into national associations, amateur and professional. And in the minutes before a race, at any level, you still have to dig around inside yourself. 